since the beginning of the year, we have watched as Western game dev devs and entertainment as an entirety has had to lay off thousands of people because they can't bring in enough money to sustain their policies. And that's a far cry from the 10,000 total last year to laying off almost 10,000 in the first three months of 2024. But of all these layoffs, one company comes out and says, we don't have enough people to keep up with the demand for our games. And that just happens to be Nintendo. Japan's games industry weathers the storm of layoffs worldwide. While 2023 was a stellar year in the eyes of game enthusiasts, with the release of much-loved titles such as the latest installment of Legend of Zelda and Baldur's Gate 3, this year has, seen, has far seen game companies generate headlines for an altogether different reason, mass layoffs. From Microsoft to Sony Interactive Entertainment, industry giants have shed hundreds of employees with games canceled as a result. Not hundreds, thousands. <laughs> if we calculate them all, I do believe it's upwards of 15 or 20,000. I did it in a previous video. I gotta find that and do another video on that. So when you go to compare Japan to the rest of the world, it's stable as a rock said Serkan Toto, head of Tokyo-based video game consultancy, Kantan Games. In January, Microsoft laid off 1,900 employees across Activision Blizzard and Xbox, according to an internal memo leaked to the media. In February, Sony Entertainment president Jim Ryan told staffers that the company was reducing global headcount by around 900 people, an 8% cut to the workforce that would also see the closing of PlayStation London studio. The same the same month, EA also cut headcount. While companies overseas are laying off thousands, studios in Japan are scrambling to attract and retain talent. Japanese companies are actually doing the exact opposite of what the game companies or direct competitors in the West are doing. And that's not going woke. That's not injecting identity politics into their games. Japanese companies also place stronger emphasis on long-term employee and employee loyalty, Inoue said, noting that this may contribute to greater stability within the workforce, reducing the likelihood of mass layoffs during challenging times. They also fire feminists. I've covered that in videos. <laughs> Literally cover that. A feminist comes in and starts preaching that feminist nonsense. They fire them. They kick them out. They're like, nah, nah, fam, get out of here. At the same time, Inoue said Japan's robust domestic gaming market is less reliant on international sales and as a result, less vulnerable to fluctuations in the global market trends. Again, the Western companies are propped up by these DEI companies who pay them to stay afloat. But they can only pay them so much. I've covered it in a previous video how BlackRock has had to start cutting employees because nobody's investing in BlackRock anymore because they have killed everything. So while every other company is failing and dealing with getting uh, what they call mass dislikes and hate campaigns for creating DEI games, and nobody's buying their games, they're laying off people. But companies like Japan and Korea fire the feminist weirdos and are making absolute bank with people in the West supporting their content. I wonder what the problem is. Surely it's not us. It's, it's quite literally the meme. Am I out of touch? No, it's the kids who are out of touch. No, you are out of touch. It is absolutely you and your absolute weirdos injecting woke politics into everything. But guys, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share this one out. And don't forget, I do these live streams on Sundays. Make sure you check them out live. But until the next one, guys, be easy like Sleazy.